Welcome to the Division with Remainders video. And today we're going to use the help of some ants and aphids to help us learn division with remainders. To get us started, let's see how aphids and ants can help us learn about division. First off, you probably know what an ant is, but what's an aphid? Well, aphids are small insects that produce a type of sugary water called honeydew, which these are the aphids, all right? They're stuck on that plant and they eat the plant basically and they produce honeydew. Now the ants eat the liquid that the aphids produce. It's very sugary, it's very tasty, they like it. The ants take great care of the aphids. They protect them from predators, herd them to better plants to eat, and even guard the aphid eggs in their anthill. They do everything they can to protect the aphids because the aphids are the ants' source of food, or the, or the aphids' honeydew is really their source of food. What's really interesting about these ants and aphids is that only humans and these ants take care of animals from other species. Just like we take care of cows for their milk, these ants take care of the aphids for their honeydew. And the only two animals in the entire planet that do this are humans and ants. So we actually have a little bit more in common with ants than we think. But of course, taking care of these aphids is a lot of work for the ants. So let's see how the ants divide the work. Okay, so let's say we have this problem. There are 15 aphids and 3 ants. How many aphids should each ant take care of? Okay, this problem is rather easy. You maybe have already figured out the answer in your head. But 15 divided by 3 is of course 5. So each ant should take care of 5 aphids. Let's see what that actually looks like. So up here we have 15 aphids, and at the bottom we have 3 ants. If we divide the aphids evenly, we can see that there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 aphids for each ant, just like we figured out. So if we write the problem, 15 aphids divided by 3 ants, of course, equals 5 aphids per ant, and we can see this right here. <laughs> Ooh, that wasn't good. Now we only have two ants, and we have these poor five little aphids that have no ants to protect them. So now we have a new division problem. Okay, we have to now divide these five ants between, I'm sorry, these five aphids between the two ants. Hmm, well how are we going to do that? Because five aphids divided between two ants. Let's see what happens. Huh, well, we can put two ants, two aphids with this ant, and two aphids with this ant, but we have this one aphid that can't go either place because we can't divide two into five evenly. We can't make even groups. It's impossible. So what we get is that five aphids divided between two ants means we get two aphids per ant with one remaining, which we can see right here. Two, ant, two aphids for this ant and two aphids for this ant with one left over. Okay? Now, that's pretty easy to see when we're playing around with the, the aphids and ants. But now we have a new part to division problems. So we already know that the five is the dividend. Okay? That's the total we started with. The two is the divisor, which is um, how many groups we're going to make. This two is the quotient, which is our answer to the division problem. How many things will go in each group, but our new part is this R1. The R means remainder, and it is the part that's left over. So like in our previous problem, we saw there was one aphid left over. Um, he is our remainder. Now, that was pretty easy to figure out the problem with, you know, having the pictures and moving the aphids around. What if we had to do this with only numbers? Well, this is what we're going to do. We're going to write the division problem a little bit differently. And we're going to write it like this. In this case, the dividend goes on the inside of this little box we make. The divisor goes on the outside. All right? And now we need to think how many times can 2 go into 5 evenly? What I mean by that is that if I have 5 fingers and I'm going to make groups of 2, I can put these 2 fingers together, I can put these 2 fingers together but I don't have enough fingers to make another group of two. 
so I can only make two groups, all right? So, two can go into five evenly two times. We put the two on top, and this is, of course, our quotient. So now, the answer to our division problem, the quotient, goes on top, all right? But now we need to figure out what is our remainder. The way we do that mathematically is that we first have to multiply the quotient by the divisor. So we take this quotient, multiply it by this divisor, which is, of course, 2 times 2 equals 4. We write that product, the 4, below the 5. Then we subtract. 5 minus 4 is 1, okay? And the 1 is our remainder. And so we keep our answer all together. We're going to write R1 next to the quotient. So this is our final answer. 2, remainder, 1. Okay? Which is what we saw in the previous problem. And if we just review it, we can see that each one of these numbers has a very specific job in this problem. Okay? So first off, the 5 represents the 5 total aphids. The 2 represents the 2 ants. Okay? This 2, the quotient, represents that in each group there are 2 aphids. Okay? The 4 represents how many aphids are protected by ants. 1, 2, 3, 4 ants are protected. The 1, which we rewrite up here, remainder 1, is our poor little aphid that has no protection from predators or isn't protected by the ant. He's the remainder. Ooh, poor aphid. Let's keep going. Okay, here's another division problem. And this time, we're not going to use any pictures, and we're really going to focus on the numbers. So we have 17 divided by 5. First, we're going to write it the new way we've learned. The 17 goes on the inside, and the 5 goes on the outside. Let's sort of switch places. Okay? Then we have to think, how many times does 5 go into 17 evenly? If you're not exactly sure... Um, we can't use our fingers anymore because there's not enough of them. We don't have 17 fingers. We can use our multiplication tables. If we think 5 times 1 is 5, hmm, I could probably get closer to 17. 5 times 2 is 10. Eh, let's see if we can get a little closer. 5 times 3 is 15. That's very close to 17. Let's see if we keep going. 5 times 4 is 20. Ooh, 20 is more than 17. I can't do that, all right? So I'm going to go with 5 times 3. So we can say that 5 goes into 17 three times evenly. So we put the 3 on top, all right? Then our next step, multiply the quotient by the divisor. Remember, this is the quotient, this is the divisor. And like we just said, 3 times 5 is 15. So the 15 goes below the 17. Now we are ready to find what the remainder is. So we subtract 17 minus 15 is 2, all right? And the 2 is our remainder. So we're going to rewrite the remainder up top, and this is our final answer, 3 remainder 2, all right? And if, okay? So these are the final steps um, for our division with remainders. First, we need to divide and think... In this example, how many times can 2 go into 5? Well, we already know it's 2 times, evenly. We put the quotient on the top, the 2. Then we multiply the quotient by the divisor. 2 times 2 equals 4. Then we need to subtract so we can find the remainder. 5 minus 4 is 1, and that difference is our remainder, and we write it next to the 2. I hope you have enjoyed the video and learned a little bit about division with remainders.